Sometimes in life, we love a good challenge. So as fragrance lovers, we like to wear challenging fragrances. In this video, I'm talking about my five most challenging fragrances. The struggle is real. This is a tag video. It was started by Tom from the excellent YouTube channel, Ouch110. If you've not checked out Tom's channel, please do so. I will leave a link to his channel below this video. Tom is very knowledgeable about fragrances. He's been going for quite a few years now on his channel, and he also works for Bloom Perfumery in London, so he has access to a lot of different fragrances, so very informative. Thank you, Tom, for tagging me in this video. Let's get into it. Before I mention the five fragrances, I just want to say I don't dislike any of these fragrances. I do like them all. So what do we mean by challenging fragrances? Well, what it means to me is it's perhaps fragrances that we can grow to like over time, or the more we get into fragrances, the more we're able to appreciate compositions, blending, notes, nuances. These five fragrances, if I'd have smelled these a few years ago, I probably would have run a mile because I just wasn't ready for them. So to me, Challenging fragrances are ones that I enjoy, but may not necessarily be enjoyed to the same degree by those around me. So let's have a look at them. The first one is from the house of Nasamato. I was gonna choose Black Afghano for this, mainly because of that cannabis note. It may be a strange smell for those around you to smell, but I actually think the fragrance I've chosen is a little more challenging than Black Afghano. It is Duro. Duro has woody notes, leather, and spices. I love Nasamato. I own four from the house, but out of the four that I own, this is the one that is the most challenging scent to wear. It's very strong, very bold, masculine, extremely potent. This is definitely not one to overspray. It kind of reminds me a little bit of a peaty Scotch whiskey. So another Nasamato that I have is Baronda, which is absolutely gorgeous, but that is a very smooth, mellow and musky type of booziness. This is uh, much sharper and more intense due to the leather in here probably, possibly the spices, just a mixture of everything really. I wouldn't want to wear this one in the high heat. This is definitely for the cooler weather. I think it would be too strong and too challenging to wear if the temperatures were too warm. So this one really for me is more of a uh, an autumn, winter, possibly some cooler spring days, uh, certainly here in the UK anyway. So because this is so bold, so potent, that's why I'm classifying this as a more challenging fragrance to wear. But if you spray this at the right time of year for the right occasion, it can be absolutely beautiful. I've just had a look at prices on this one and natino.co.uk are currently selling this for 89 pounds. So if you know the smell of Duro, if you think it's something you like, if you've had a sample in the past, then that's a good price because the full retail is usually £124. Incidentally, and I don't expect this to have any influence on anyone watching this video whatsoever, but Demi Rowling really, really loves this one. She really raved about it. And of course, that has nothing to do with why I purchased it. The next one is from a pretty new UK indie perfume house called Rook Perfumes, and it's suede. In this bottle, we've got notes of suede, tobacco, and leather. When I first sprayed suede, I wasn't a big fan. I got a damp leather accord and an ashtray-like tobacco, which seemed pretty flat on my skin. It didn't really develop. It didn't um, it seem to have that many layers other than this kind of damp leather and uh, ashy type tobacco. I wore this one again recently and I don't know if my tastes have changed slightly or if there's been some maceration in the bottle, but I wore it again and I got that same leathery, smoky opening, but it just seemed to develop a little bit more. I think more of the sweetness from the tobacco came out and it actually made the whole composition a bit more balanced and much more to my liking. It's still a little challenging. It's certainly not a nailed on compliment getter, but if you enjoy wearing artisanal fragrances for you because you enjoy the smell and you enjoy smelling things a little bit different, then this one might work for you. Again, this is one more to wear in the cooler months. The next one I'm talking about is from the same perfumer as Jeremy's new office fragrance, Alberto Morias. Now this one gives us maybe a little bit of hope that Jeremy's scent may not necessarily be a safe, generic 
office type scent. This is certainly one of the most challenging and daring designer fragrances on the market, in my opinion. I am talking about Gucci Guilty Absolute. Notes in here are leather, patchouli, cypress, woody notes and vetiver. So yeah, definitely one of the most daring designer fragrance releases. And the reason for that is the sharp medicinal smell that this one is said to have. And you do definitely get that. Kind of reminds me a little bit of TCP, which is an ointment that you would put on cuts and grazes to clean them out, get rid of the germs. Also, people say it reminds them of the smell of a band-aid or a plaster. And yeah, you do get this medicinal smell. It must be the leather working with the patchouli and the vetiver. But there's something about it that is quite intoxicating. And I quite like the fact that it's a little bit daring. It makes you feel a little bit more excited when you wear this one. So this is a long way away from those pretty safe designer releases. Because of this quite potent medicinal accord, I think that's what makes this one a little more challenging to wear. Again, this one is bold and has a potency and that medicinal accord may not be to everyone's tastes. And for those reasons, I'm saying this one is just a little challenging, but in a good way. Okay, the next one is from Al Haramain, and this one comes in a bottle that looks like a relic that Indiana Jones may have stolen. I'm talking about Danal Oud Cambodi. Notes in this are oud, vanilla, musk, patchouli and herbal notes. Okay, this isn't a barnyard oudy type fragrance. It's not the aspect of it which makes it a little bit challenging. I find it to be very smooth, very elegant, but it's quite exotic smelling. It reminds me of incense burning in an ancient temple. So this composition is not really what you would find in Western perfumery. And because it's a little bit different, I think that's what makes this a little more challenging. You won't go down to your local Sainsbury's and smell many people wearing this one. As long as I'm in the right mood for this one, I find it really enjoyable to wear, very high quality, especially given the price. You can pick this one up for just £25 on eBay. Steal. The final challenging fragrance I have to show you is Pure Oud. This one is from the house of Suskind and it's called Sublime Oud. Notes in this one are Oud. This is very high quality, but also pretty expensive. This 6ml vial will set you back about 180 euros, but it is very potent, very powerful. I mean, even the bottle looks like a plutonium canister. You could probably throw this in the back of a DeLorean and it would power you through time. I found out the hard way how potent this stuff is. I was going to the post office one day to pick up some packages and uh, I thought I would uh, give this a bit of a test drive. So I uh, started applying it and uh, stupidly I was putting this on like wallpaper paste. So I did apply um, too much of this. I went into the post office and the little room where you're collecting your parcels is pretty tiny and there's always a queue of people in there. So I'm stood there in the queue waiting just knowing that I smelled of skanky barnyard oud. I mean, it, to me, it wasn't an unpleasant smell, but I was aware that it was such a different type of smell, uh, probably for everyone else stood in that room. Even though it is a high quality oud, I think it's just the potency was probably not to the level that um, people were used to smelling in that little, little um, post office room. So yeah, that was a little bit embarrassing. So I certainly found it challenging in that situation, but applied correctly just with the slightest little dab just one touch on either side of the pulse points this one just is exquisite also you can wear this you can layer it with other fragrances so if you want to add a bit more backbone a bit more punch to other fragrances it really works well i have tried it with some other of suskin's fragrances and uh, it does work really well so those are my five most challenging fragrances. Again, thanks to Tom for tagging me. This was a different type of video and it really made me kind of think about my fragrances a little bit more and think about complex fragrances and why we wear some of the fragrances that we do and maybe how best to apply them. So really enjoyed doing the research for this one. I'm gonna tag a couple of channels in this. I'm gonna go for one UK channel and one US channel. These are both channels that I don't ever like to miss a single video of. Uh, the UK channel is Wafts from the Loft. 
extremely knowledgeable about niche fragrances. I learn a lot from their channel. I'm very thankful that they're putting content out there. And the US channel I'm going to tag is Justin Copeland. Justin's got a great channel. He releases just one video a week and I really look forward to it each week. He's super chilled and laid back but very knowledgeable and always has a great opinion about whatever fragrances is talking about. So, what's from the loft and Jay Copeland, you're tagged. No pressure. If you think it's going to be a fun thing for you to do, then go for it. It'd be cool to try and keep this tag video going. I know Tom's trying to um, do new things with his channel this year, so if we can continue this tag, that would be great. If you don't, I'll just hunt you down and force you to do it. <laughs> Okay, that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to use my sublime mood to go back to the future where YouTube has made me a millionaire. So I'm going to pay for all those free bottles I've received. I'll see you in the future. Until then, keep tuning into FM and keep smelling good. Cheers. Cheers.